Hello, oh, beautiful and lovely gamers. My name is Jerome. Hope you're having a lovely summer. I was at the movies watching the new Spider-Man, which is, well, actually um, super amazing. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend you go watching it. It's actually really fucking good. If you like Marvel, of course. Um, and I wanna, me and my friend, me and my good friend Kajelio, which has been named name multiple times on the channel. He's played for my team when I used to run a competitive team, and so on. He was the main tank. We went in to talk about Overwatch, like we normally do, when you know. It's just kind of one of the things that just naturally occurs when we talk. And Ryan came to the subject. And something that I want to talk about, especially now that the two Roblockers come in. Ryan has been power creeped heavily. Meaning that um, most heroes of Ryan, when Ryan was, when Overwatch was in early stages, you know, back in the good old days, as to say, um, Ryan had a very prevalent spot. He was almost like picked over everyone. Then D.Va got buffed, Winston got buffed, then Orisa was introduced, Hammer was introduced, a lot of heroes went through, Break came, and so on. And all of that was. And when, when, when before GOATS, you know, before GOATS was the main priority, uh, you, you saw Death Ball, and then, you know, Triple Tank, Quad Tank even was played, Ana Boost meta was their Beyblade meta, and so on. You know, World the Tanks, and so on. And then we came over to Dive. And what we noticed was a Dive just outdid by death ball and if you play death ball when dive started to arise and especially when it hit the peak especially if, if you were scrimming at the time or you played in any tournament you notice how much better dive comp was than death ball most people still play two to two at this point death ball just got out maneuvered dive takes space faster they execute faster they can neutralize two tanks by just playing around them and striking the back line in so many ways that it just becomes very difficult and you get very little value out of your main tank and also your off tank, your Saria, um, that it just becomes... It's not that Death Ball is bad, it's just that other team composition can just play around them so much easier. And with the buff to Bunker and, and with the introduction of you know the new Hansel, which has incredible pressure, uh, Roadhog getting a faster fire rate, having more seal pressure right now, um, you know, Rissa getting her buffs and so on, slowly but surely, you see Death Ball getting pushed more and more out. And Death Ball, Ryan himself, the, the cornerstone of Death Ball, and also of course Saria, but especially Ryan, has just been slowly but surely just not touched. He hasn't really gotten, he got a little bit of a of a build up that reduces the amount of CC he hits and so on, but he is not very good. Not in 2-2-2 lock. He, he wasn't good before Rolock came in. And we have, since then, getting buffed to a multiple of heroes. Dive still's outplayed and there's nothing changed there. Bunker has been buffed. And there's new synergies that happens there. So, without goats, without being able to run 3-3, you're just rushing points. And, and playing, you know, with such a heavy support structure around the Ryan. And being able to force fights so easily that they have to engage the Ryan in his range. And they have to brawl with the Ryan. Which was the, the power of goats that you could actually just, like, choo-choo train past everyone. Like, choo-choo motherfuckers. And push them out. Without that, Ryan is useless. Like, he's really difficult to play, and he's not a competitive viable pick anymore. And I think that should be changed. I And it's just it's just power creeps. Other heroes have been buffed, he hasn't been touched. It, that's very normal for competitive games to see. And reworks have happened because of that, and buffs have happened because of that. So what I want to see, and, and my way to fix this, is, is two things. First of all, Ryan is supposed to be, you know, like the design philosophy behind Ryan has he's his anchor tank, right? He has a shield, he pushes with that shield, and he pushes the team forward, and then he claims space, and, like, goes to the objective by pushing the enemy team back, right? The problem is that most enemies can run away from him very easily, and most uh, bunkers can, can melt him before he even reaches them. That's the issues. So, my solution is to give him faster movement speed when his shield's up, so he can actually push eff effectively. Um, so we can actually forward, even with amp speed, which is a must on 2-2-2, two -two -two, to actually get any headroom. Uh, unless you're playing against another 2-2-2, two -two -two, and even then it is kind of still a necessity to engage and disengage and rotate. Without, you know, without speed, you should have in just a faster movement speed. And, you know, maybe almost no penalty or very little penalty from running with your shield up. Um, but the biggest, or one of the bigger one, is to... Give him a shield that can actually, you know, take more than half a second worth of damage. When you have raised the damage output for so many people, Mercy will damage with the hand sword, which will rapid fire your shield, and it breaks almost immediately. With that on top of an Arisa that's just gatling gunning you, and a hog that's right-clicking your shield, add send to on top of all of this, and whatever third fucking DPS you guys are running, the like second DPS you guys are running, like, if you're running a Widow, it's less shield power, but if you're running, like, a fucking Junkrat, right? It's, it's cancer. It's very difficult to play against. 
And at that point, we need, in my opinion, a better shield. Like, we need to increase his shield health and his movement speed with his shield so he can actually push. It's very easy for Ryan to get stuck, and it's very difficult for them to advance. And a lot of time, yes, you can jump and shield push and kind of jump with your shield and so on to carry momentum. It's, even, it's still slow, and it still does make your shield break that fast, and it still takes a lot of health and a lot of resources to keep you up during some of those rotations and makes you very punishable. So my advice is to do something similar like that. Give him more movement speed, and or, most likely or, uh, no, most likely and, give him a larger shield, larger health pull on the shield, so he can actually fulfill his role of actually pushing, so he can be viable, at least on some points, because even on a lot of close quarter points, even if you can push into the Arisa, the Arisa will fortify, and at that point she's just gonna tank the Ryan, and the Ryan's gonna get punished heavily because of that. Give him something like that, or give him a passive buff that allows him to, when he drops a shield, he, takes, he has damage reduction for like a second, so he can drop the shield and actually swing his hammer without immediately getting deleted. Because if Ryan drops his shield and starts like mouse wanting one or two swings and actually trying to compete with the Arisa and damage output, he loses two, three, four hundred health immediately from damage output from the opposing team. And that's an issue. So a passive build like that can also work, but something needs to happen because Ryan right now, when 2 to 2 gets released, because when this video is out, I'm in Germany, I'm pre-making these, when 2 to 2 is released, I think that he's not gonna work. Um, I would like to hear what your solution is down below. Do you guys have a solution for this problem or anything? Uh, how do you guys want to do that? Of course, another solution would be to nerf the entire like dive tanks and nerf bunker and so on, which I don't think is gonna work. I think that just buffing the Ryan would be um, a larger solution to that problem. Maybe buffing Zarya, but I think Zarya is strong enough as she is, so I think that the Ryan buff would be um, really, really good. Um, besides that, if you want to improve over the time, if you want to get better at the game, it doesn't matter if you're bronze or top 500, you can hire me as your private coach. It's 50 years worth your session. Hit me up with this code. Again, if I'm in Germany, I might not respond immediately, but I'll respond to you guys as soon as I get back home. Um, I hope that you guys have a lovely, lovely gaming experience. Please take care of yourself. It's summer. It's hot. So drink a lot of water and stay hydrated. I love you guys very much. Please take care of yourself. So positive. And as always, my name is Mitchell. You guys keep the enemy. You're awesome.